I'm doing an 1890s ball gown. Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I am really excited. We are starting officially on this 1890s Elsa ball gown. It's right here. Oh, it looks so pretty, doesn't it? This is based on the design of Gibberstein. Gibberstein? I don't know. Here's here's it. I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I will link everything down below so you can like check out this and the other wonderful designs that she has come up with. I am personally excited um, about this project because there is a group of us doing them. So we have lots of people actually. I think there's like five of us. There might be more. There's at the point that I'm like filming this, people are still iffy on if they're just gonna hop on the bandwagon or not. But there are some really awesome things planned as well and other people who have started and their things look amazing and I'm just, I'm so excited. Why am I rambling? Let's just get going. So this is gonna be the ball gown fabric. It is, honestly, it's mystery fabric. It came from someone else's stash, but when they burn tested it, they told me it was silk and they were selling it for less than $5 a yard, so I got it. I used the pattern that I had scaled up from Janet Arnold's Patterns of Fashion 2. This is the pattern that I used to make the dress for the opera, which was cancelled due to the plague. Rest in peace, pretty dress. Maybe I'll finish you one day. I started by laying out all the pattern pieces on my dress form. I wanted to get a rough idea on how much I needed to add to the pattern to fit me. Once I had all the pattern pieces on, I adjusted them how I thought they should shape around the body. Then, for good measure, I draped some cotton voil on the other side so I could compare the two patterns. I did my best to put all of the darts and seam lines in the same place. So I probably went through like two mock-ups and then I went, okay, this mock-up is good enough to cut out of the final fabric. I flatlined the bodice with a lightweight canvas to make sure that it has the structure I was looking for. Next time, I might look for a thicker material and use boning. I also surged all of the seams on the bodice. If I'm making a ball gown, it's going to last me 20 years. When the bodice was pieced together, I thread marked the darts. This made sure that the fabric didn't shift at all when I pinned it together before sewing. On to cutting out the rest of the dress! I went through multiple layouts before settling on this one. I was working with limited fabric and wanted maximum volume in the skirt and sleeves. So that made things a little tricky. Eventually I settled on the layout and chalked out the pieces onto my fabric. This made it so I could remove my pattern pieces and make it easier to cut out. While I was cutting out the fashion fabric, I also cut out an organza layer for each skirt panel as well as both sleeves. After cutting, I flatlined all the freshly cut pieces together with my serger. So I goofed, and I'm going to show you guys my goof. You ready? I need a right and a left side of these two pieces, and I don't have a right and a left side. So I need to cut off the serging and do it again. Yay me! Luckily it was a quick fix, which meant that I could piece together the skirt before returning to the bodice. When I, I was terrified of this bodice, and I'm like, how do I take this like lightweight raw silk and make it structured enough to be a ball gown bodice? I probably went overboard. I'm just throwing that out there, probably went overboard, probably did not need to interline the whole bodice with canvas, but this is what happens when I'm anxious. Regardless though, I'm actually really happy with like the structure and the shape of this bodice and I think it'll offset like the sleeves and the skirt really well to have a very structured bodice. I just put my corset on so I could see how it fit. And what I realized is that it fits my bust perfectly, but it fits my waist terribly. And it's mostly because I have a sway back and because I did not account for the three inch reduction at my waist with my stays on. 
So, plan to resolve this. I want to, this back seam at an angle. Really? Do I have to? Because if I, ooh. We're going to do this instead. I'm going to take all of these seams in by um, a half inch seam allowance, which will take it one inch total um, out of these back two seams, so the side back seams. That'll mean that I can leave this straight, which decreases the chance that I will have a hard time doing the hooks and eye closure. The other thing that needs to happen is I need to take this much out of the shoulder straps, which is easy. I will just do the math and reduct it from this in there, and it'll be nice and pretty. Once I have done all of that, I'm going to convince my lovely husband to pin me back into this to make sure that I did it correctly, um, and I'll be sure to show you guys that fitting. Okay, so I did those quick alterations and I noticed that I suddenly have a lot of shape through my waist now, which is perfect. And then it also follows the curve of my back better, which you can see. Um, I do have a little bit of room I can still take out here, but I'm not going to worry about it. Um, if anything, I'm just going to round these arm size a little bit. Um, I think they're good height. I just want it a little bit more rounded so it doesn't um, constrict my movement. Because if you see, like, I roll my shoulders forward, it pinches here a bit. So I think just taking out three quarters of an inch or so when I round it would make it perfect. What I did not expect was in order to get the rest of the volume of the sleeve in, I'm basically going to have to cartridge pleat these in. I'm probably just going to run over it with my machine like a maniac because that's how I sew. Anyway, won't this look fantastic when it's like huge. I also want to put a cuff on the bottom, just a small one to like hold the gathers together. Um, I've noticed that when I've made like the poof sleeves for like my everyday wardrobe, if you put a cuff on them, they look a lot more poofier than if they don't have a cuff on. Um, the cuffs are on. I did play with the idea of putting a placket into the sleeve cuffs so that way they could like button on and off and then I thought I don't want to put that much effort into these sleeves. So they just have a cuff that's big enough to like fit around my arm comfortably. So they'll probably sit somewhere right there, which is about where I need them to sit. And they're so fluffy. <laughs> Look at them. Oh, I'm so excited. The skirt placket is a 12 inch step folded in half, sewed and turned. I made sure the raw edges were on the center back seam and the waist of the skirt so they would be finished nicely later. The waistband of the skirt was a 2 inch wide strip cut out of the remaining scraps of the fabric. I lined the center of the waistband with the center of the skirt before pinning them together. When I got to the back panel, I ran a running stitch inside the seam line and gathered the fabric into the waistband. Then I sewed the waistband onto the skirt, being careful not to catch any unwanted fabric in the stitching. For added strength, I pinned some gross grain ribbon to act as a waist tape.
I finish the edges of the ribbon by hand before turning the waistband and pinning it in place. I hand sewed the waistband down with whip stitches because I really wanted the seam to be invisible and I don't trust myself to stitch in the ditch. After the waistband was in place, I pinned the placket closed. This allowed me to base the bottom of the placket in place before I sewed the center back seam and finished it with hand stitches. Once the center back seam was in place, I whipped the seam allowance to the placket to create a nice finish. Oh, to show you guys the waistband, look how pretty that is! Um, I opted for a thinner waistband over a thicker one. <sighs> just because I like the look of thin waistbands and it closes the nicest that I have done for a placket in a long time. So I'm a really big fan of this pattern and I'm re a really big fan of the volume in the skirt. Will probably make my future mocking skirts the same. It was at this point that I got worried and had a minor panic attack about not knowing how to get the proper silhouette, to which I got some wonderful help on my life. So this is the one that I had made beforehand. You guys can see that it's quilted down quite a lot. It's fairly rigid. Um, everyday wear, totally going to wear this. Ball gown wear, I wanted something a little extra. So you can see the difference between the thickness. So I took pictures and I sent it to some friends and they're just like, yeah, you're, you're not working with the right time period silhouette there. Um, and I went, I know, that's why I sent this to you. Anyway, see, maybe, maybe, let's put the skirt over and see. I mean, if we were going for bustles and like fabulous rumps, I could see this being perfect. But we're not going for bustles and fabulous rumps. We're going for like nice smooth lines. So the other thought is to just use one of them. I mean, it's better. I feel like it's still a big rump. This is not an even waistband by any measure. So I kind of like the look of just one, but it doesn't give like the shaping on the sides. So, okay. So I'm gonna stop stressing about the bump pad and start getting with the petticoats. That seems to be the general consensus. Um, I do need a petticoat to help fluff out the hem, so I'm trying to decide on, I should probably do some research. I ended up taking the weekend to make a petticoat and got so excited afterwards that I had to dress up Betsy for all of you to see the wonderful shape that this dress has. So this is my favorite linen petticoat, well, it's my only linen petticoat, but this is the first layer. Um, because the organza one is so full, it's really important that, you know, I don't get tangled up in my petticoats, which is why I want to include the linen one. Plus, the linen will feel better against my skin than the organza one. Alrighty. So you can see how it all just kind of pools, um, and then it does have a lot more volume at the back. Um, mostly because um, I need the waistband to be the size for both my uncorseted and corseted waist measurement. I will put two different sets of hooks and eyes in um, to allow for that, which is all I'm really going to need. So, whoop, oh, <laughs> I lost my balance. Right, do you see that? Look how pretty that is. So you can see, like... It has a nice rump without looking like a bustle because that's what I was struggling with before. I felt like it looked like um, I had a bustle underneath the skirt when really I just want a nice rump. Um, and then the front looks really nice as well. So yeah, I'm so excited. And being completely satisfied with the shape, it's time for my fitting with Casey and we shall continue this project 
another day.